It sounds crazy when I say it out loud, but this is our new home, Kimberly Joe. Until this year, we hadn't even set foot on a narrow boat. We are Tony and Sonia, and after more than 20 years of teaching, we thought you only lived once, and it was time that we had some adventures. We would love it if you came along with us. What you might have seen in the past is we have got this. Um, we bought this a while back. It's been absolutely brilliant. I can't recommend this enough either. This is uh, Afri, I think that's how you say it. It's a 2000 watt power bank. The price of it for what you get is incredible when you compare it with some of the big names that are out there. So I'm not going to mention these big names, but there are some big companies out there. They get a lot of publicity. Um, but honestly, this has been excellent for us. Now, we have had a little bit of a problem, and the problem with it is, with our batteries being so poor, it's been quite difficult to charge this. Um, so even when we're running the engine, so we're traveling somewhere and we plug it in, uh, it gets really hot down by the inverter, um, and we get that squeaky noise, which knows that we have put the engines under a bit of, bit of power issues. What we've done to try and um, get rid of that issue, is we've bought um, some solar panels. As you can see right now, if I come right in, we are getting 124 watts, we're on 15%, so it's charging it slowly. And you can see here the lead, just going out for our hatch. So I'm just gonna take us outside and I'll show you what that's connected to. There's our solar, which we'd be very happy with. Let's bring it down here. Here is our new solar bank. Each one of these gets 50 watts. So that's 200. You can see if I just turn it around, the sun is right up there. And it's going to stay over there for most days. So I think we should be able to probably get this charged up, hopefully to 100%. If that's the case, happy days. The advantage of this is the fact that, like last night, um, it was about nine o'clock and we hear the beeping from the batteries. We've only been in for about an hour a bit, so we popped across to the pub, which if I turn us round, you can see on the hill over there, on just over past the um, bridge. We popped over to that pub, lovely pub, right on the water. Just had the one drink, because Sonia had quite a busy day yesterday. She was going to pick up the car. Um, so yeah, we was only inside for about, God, it was about an hour's telly, we watched about an hour's TV. Um, and then the beeping started, so we had to just turn it all off and go to bed. It was a 10.4 it was on. Can't believe it. So, um, obviously the advantage there is um, that now we'll be able to just plug in the power bank and carry on our night when the beeping starts, and it will start. So we've had a beautiful few days in Abingdon, really, really lovely. And then the last two days have been, well, the last four days have been incredibly hot. Like it's hotter than the middle of the summer has been. Uh, first time since June, I think, since it's been this temperature. So we've just enjoyed sort of sitting around the bow, mm -hmm. sitting on the side, a couple of barbecues, that kind of thing. Um, and we've just just thought, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've both gone. Well, the temperature's dropping, isn't it? So well, it's too hot during the middle of the day, and we've got a long way we want to go tomorrow. And we're sitting there in the shade and thinking, well, the temperature is coming down to a nice cruising temperature. And it's such a beautiful day. Let's go. So we did. So it's probably just gone four. I don't even know the time, I it's think. About, forget, about 10 to four it is because I was looking at the lock there. So we've just come from having the lock at 10 to four and we'll just see how far we get. Yeah, we've got no plans where we're going to stop, what we're going to do. We're just going to keep Sh on going. Shock horror. Keep on going until we get to where we like. We have shown this before on our channel, but this is Polaris um, and it is completely made of stainless steel. Obviously the advantage of that is no rusting.
is going absolutely crazy on the other side of these gates because the babies are in the lock and she can't get them out but she's going mad of the lock calling to them so actually it will be a good thing is when we go up she'll be able to get in with them but she's up there going absolutely crazy and baby ducks are down there bless them reunited This was still a building. Now you've got the back of the building there. There is a space in there. And the front of the building here. Okay. Yeah, you can do, can't we? Proper, proper early start. Oh, it's the gambler. Today. Oh, the gambler again. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. We haven't set off this early before, have we? No, we've never been on the, on the move this early. We've been up with this early before. And I've got, ready, one of these. It's been a long while since we've used one of these uh, for the locks because we'll be going on to the canal today. We've got a couple of locks, last couple of locks on the Thames. Onto the canal. Locks and King's Lock and then we're going to go up Duke's Cut yep. so we can cut out that bit of canal between Oxford and uh, we're going to the Low Bridge. And I'm just going to say, this is supposed to be the lowest bridge it is the lowest bridge on the Thames. Yeah, but it's supposed to be. I don't even have to put the camera down because it's still not that low. So I'm just holding on to the camera to make sure. <laughs> but I don't actually need to put it down. So it's you not do as need low. To duck, just in case. Yeah, it's not as low <coughs> as you think sometimes. We saw a couple of vlogs where it's like, oh my god, so difficult to get through there. But the wheel level does change. So you could be on the upper Thames and then the water level go up. Yeah. And be stuck up this end, not as a, but probably not a narrow boat, but definitely a cruiser. Seems like a good point, Son, to do for anyone who's interested to do our pros and cons of um, the River Thames as a narrow boat. Okay. So, as a narrow boat, pros you can turn the boat anywhere you like as long as it's what the river's wide enough. Yeah, and that I can't tell you enough <laughs> how nice that is because the amount of times on a normal on a canal. You're looking going, oh, is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? Oh, yeah, that was good. But too, you late. Put, too late. You can't turn around <laughs> and get it. We've missed so many nice mornings because of that. I and think then... we'd be better though, because we were still new at it, we were, it was harder for us to judge the length of the boat. But now we've been on it for some time, I think we're better at judging the length of the boat and the size of a, a mooring. Yeah. So in the end, you just keep going and keep going until you find a window and then you go, yeah. winding point, and then you go all the way back. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Pro there. Um, the clarity of the water, beautiful. Yeah. And the cruising on the river is lovely. It is, really, really nice. It really is lovely. It's yeah. beautifully wide, you've got a variety of nature, yeah. and the, some of the scenery is stunning. Yeah, and definitely. I was going to say, and you, and you can go quicker. And you go quicker, yeah. Oh my God, you can go much so much quicker. Yeah. And no, no tick over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which is lovely, although at the moment we're not doing much more than that because it's very early. Yeah, it's and nice. There's a little mist on sleeping. Little mist on the water. I don't know if you can see that behind us, you probably can. Um, but yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? A little bit of mist on the water in the morning. Because it's very early for us. I think it's about seven o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, it must be. So I would say that's probably all the pro oh no. Oh Get the other one is visiting some really iconic places. Yeah, and not just visiting them, just pulling up. And mooring right next to them. Yeah, literally it seems weird, it's there, like the, the building is there just next to you 
That some seems lovely strange. quintessential riverside villages as well have been really lovely. Yeah. I think some of those have been stunning. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, but that's but for me, but they're the pros of yeah. the Thames. Um, cons, biggest Oops. one, straight away son. Mooring. Mooring. It's either um, you see a, a lovely space which would be absolutely perfect and then there's a tiny, tiny little sign in green hidden among the leaves that says no mooring. Um, so you end up just mooring from town to town really. So. Yeah. I mean, how many no mooring signs must there be? Oh my gosh, oh my someone's God. making a fortune now printing <laughs> no mooring signs. Um, so that's one issue. The other issue is the 24 hourness of mooring. So when you do get a mooring, they say 24 hours maximum, which is annoying because by the time you get moored, which is about lunchtime, say, if you're lucky, um, you don't have time really to enjoy the time you have there or explore because you're off the next morning. Yeah, it just, just fills you, doesn't it? Like, more up, Santa E, work out where you're going to more up tomorrow, and then off you go. More up, Santa E, work out where you're, and it's just, whereas on the canals, you kind of, you more up, you chill out a little bit that day, you might have a little explore, you come back to the boat next day, you yeah, go off and do the things you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. It just, it's so much more relaxed. It's the pace is slower. Yeah. On the I find the pace on the Thames much faster. Yeah. And, and then, and the other one is if you do find a good mooring, yeah. Nine times out of ten, someone will turn up with a <laughs> with a bag saying, "Oh, you got to pay for this." So, yeah, <laughs> then the moorings are the are the big ones, and then you've got the West Side Story, son. Oh yeah, West Side Story. When it comes to canals, um, river boats, uh, cruisers, and narrow boats. Oh. they hate each other. <laughs> it's not good. Not all of them, obviously. We've no, met no, some fantastic yeah, yeah. people on cruise boats, cruiser ships, cruiser whatever's. Cruisers, but they um. There is definitely a them and us feel yeah. to it. There's not the same sense of community that you get on the canal, really, I don't think. Yeah. And I think, I think us narrowboats pull it on ourselves a little bit. Not most of us, but sometimes you see these narrowboats and they pull up somewhere and they okay. just do not move at all, which means no one else get there because they're like 58 foot long, some of them are like 70 foot long, and they just stay there for weeks on end. Yeah, they? they've been there for months. On end. Months. Yeah. And that would really, I think, as a cruiser, I suppose, if you've got a 70 foot narrowboat, you're taking up two or three boats yeah. spaces, which I think is what their problem is. And sometimes as well, these narrowboats aren't very well looked <coughs> after. They don't look very nice as people go past. They dump their rubbish on the side. So I can We've see seen a, a couple of examples of that. Yeah, so I can see a little bit from the cruiser's point of view. I also think that's probably why a lot of the mooring signs have gone up as well. Like people who own that land don't want somebody just rocking up, whether it be a cruiser or a narrowboater, yeah. um, just rocking up for months on end and leaving their stuff everywhere. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if that's part of the reason for some of the no mooring signs. Well, I know when we booked for Bill, uh, Bill Park, one of the reasons they started making people pay is because too many times they were having to just clear up after people who'd pulled up there. So yeah, it was just nice. so in the end they were like, right, that's why we're going to have to, because we've got to pay someone now to go clean it up. I think that's the thing with most walks of life though to be fair there's always the odd few that ruin it for the many yeah and on the other side cruisers are terrible for mooring um, and leaving gaps. yeah leaving like tiny little gaps so, so rather than move up say next to the boat in front so someone else can get on they would just park themselves right smack bang in the middle and leave like a little a small cruiser space in front and behind yeah and we've heard quite a lot of times from people as well that they've then said to someone <laughs> oh would you mind just moving up so we can get in there and they've just gone nope <laughs> and it's not just one or two people. No. It's been quite a few. Which we would never do. There's quite a little community with a narrow boat, which is really nice. So I've never heard of that with a narrow boat, but yeah, with the cruisers, I've heard it a lot. Yeah. And then we joined the Thames Boaters Group, because uh, that gives you lots of information on what's happening on the river. And sometimes they get into like an online row over um, between cruisers and narrow boaters. Yeah. Uh, calling us ditch crawlers. Yeah. <laughs> so the ditch crawlers get there. And then they'll go, oh yeah, then the um, plastic whatever. Like yogurt pots. The yogurt it's, pots. It's so milk. funny. Yeah, it's really funny. Really it's funny. funny. Um, got a lot. Yeah, well, I've, I've enjoyed it. Loved it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think the Thames is one that I'm going to absolutely rush back to. I'm quite thinking now I'd like to look at the rest of the canal system probably before I, I kind of. Yeah. I think you've got the problem, problem with the Thames, haven't you, is that. It's, um, it's accessibility to London for a lot of those villages. Yeah. yeah. And that's quite evident. Yeah, I think there are a lot of these people, they do, they moor up and then they go and get the train into London for their job. 
but that yeah. makes it that that makes more wings fewer. It's absolutely a stunning morning. We've just finished, just finished our talking to camera little piece about the fact that we're going back onto the canals. And then all of a sudden, someone goes, oh God, there's a light come on. So as we go in, she steps back a little bit. I've lifted up the uh, engine bay and our fan belt has snapped again. Again, would you believe? So, I mean, it's a nightmare because we're just in the middle of the Thames here. Um, We've moored up somewhere, we're not supposed to moor up, so we just pulled over, obviously. There's a boat yard just down the way, so I just walked down to see if it's open, but it probably isn't even open yet. Um, nightmare. Nightmare. Beautiful, though, but still, nightmare. So, so it's just come back. We've moored at the sailing club thingy. Um, they've told us that um, Halfords should stock one, so we've got to get it, get the number and then go down Halfords and see if we can get a new one. Lovely, being a narrow boat by. Narrow boat, boat, a boat, a boat. So, here is our fan belt. It should be wrapped around that. Done. What? Update us. <sighs> right, so we've ordered a fan belt. They're gonna get one in for 11 o'clock for us. We called the RCR, we're waiting for them to call us back. So if they can come and fix it, great. If they can't, then we'll fix it ourselves at 11 o'clock. But we have learned a lesson and we do it all the time. And I'm gonna promise, because it's my fault actually, we're gonna just be more proactive when it comes to things rather than just like, oh, leave it and let's hope it doesn't, goes away. Like with the squealing, should have done something about it, didn't. Should have had a spare on board, didn't order that, so learned a lesson. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Just, we just keep learning all the time. <laughs> you just hold that up for us. Ta -da. So that is said fan belt, second one. Mm, yeah, second one. Well, it's a beautiful morning here. Not quite how we expected to spend it. It's like the Thames won't give us up. It won't let us leave. Let us go. We're outside Medley Sailing Club. And this is no more in property of Middle East Sailing Club. So we're hoping that they will be human about it <laughs> and um, will be understanding about our predicament. So today has been a hell of a day. Our batteries are there. This is our little app that tells us. So there's our batteries. But you'll notice 70 degrees is the temperature. Now, that's not good. Right, let's take the last hour or so. If you look at that, I don't know if you can quite read it, but basically our batteries went up to 84 degrees. Yep, yeah, 84 degrees, which meant they said they was in danger of exploding. Luckily, Sonia spotted this. Um, so what she did was she quickly ran out and she put some towels over the solar because what was happening is they were just getting hot and hot. The power going into it, but they couldn't, they weren't doing anything with the power. Um, and they were getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And in the end, they would have exploded. Um, so Sonia quickly covered that over, we found out that a master switch so we could isolate the batteries. Um, that's what we did. And then um, we've rung up again the, our sort of our roadside assistants, and the equivalent of what you would have on your car kind of thing. They were going to be coming anyway about three or four o'clock um, to just put on the fan belt. But Sonia sent another message to them and basically saying, look, we're in trouble here. Yeah? And they got back straight away, the, the bloke who's doing it got back straight away and said, right. And luckily the things he said to do were the things we'd already done. So, um, and he's basically just told us our batteries are gone. He's gonna have to take the batteries out of the boat. <laughs> I know he couldn't make it out. So he's gonna take, have to take the batteries out of the boat because they're dangerous. So he needs to get them out of the boat altogether. So we've just got the starter. Now that's gonna mean, um, like we've just paid for this. <laughs> Honestly, we've just paid for the lithium today, so we've just paid literally paid for lithium, but that could, that's not being installed till the 31st of October. So what that means is it's like going to be like the Mary Celeste on this boat. During the day, if it's sunny, the solar will give us some power for different things, but we're going to have no fridge, um, no washing machine, um, 
all of these things were just going to be without. But this is all without him seeing it. I mean, he might turn up and say, actually, it's worse than that, or better than that, but the way it was going, it's probably going to be worse than that. Who knows? Who knows? So, it's never boring, is it? Boat life. So, a little update. On the day that we got up at six o'clock in the morning, because we went to um, travel before it got really hot and get ourselves into onto the Oxford Canal, get us more up at Thrapp for a nice sunny day. On that day, it is now about half past two and we are still 10 minutes away from where we started our journey, um, waiting for an engineer to come along to do the batteries so that we can move and get to Thrapp before it's dark. Yeah. I think I said in the last video that um, plans change when you're on a boat. And I think boats are what happens when you're making plans. Right, update to the update to the update of the update. Um, so the bloke came round um, from our kind of, I don't know, the equivalent of the AA. I'll never get the acronym right. But basically, the thing that we signed up to that helps you if you get stuck, the same as the AA does if you're in a car. He came round and he was like, um, Right, yeah, we need to get rid of these batteries. Um, I'll get you a couple of batteries, um, and then you can put those in. And then we were kind of thinking, well, this seems crazy. We're going to buy two new batteries, and then in a month and a half, we're going to pay for lithium. So these two two batteries are going to go out the window. So I just asked him, you know, could you do the whole battery setup? Because we're not going to find anyone who could. And he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I can get you batteries done in here. So. We then got in touch with, remembering that we've just paid the um, best part of £4,000 to get some lithium batteries. We've literally just sent the payment. So we had to get back in touch with um, Tom Malone, the person who did our solar. He was brilliant, I've got to say, really, really good. He was like, yeah, that's no, fine, just I, I, I won't cash it or kind of thing. Um, sorry, in the background, feeding ducks, obviously, you've got to talk to them as you feed them. So he was like, yeah, that's no, fine, don't worry about it. You know, if you ever go to lithium, just let me know. So then we got in touch with the bloke and he's like, that's fine, I'll get four batteries for you tomorrow. We'll put them in. He said, and to be honest, he said, your batteries have probably been awful since you've come on the boat. They're probably well overdue. So you'll notice a massive difference with these. And we're just like, fine, just do it. Just do it, we've been stuck here all day. It's been awful, absolutely awful. Um, but, you know, we're still learning. Um, and yeah, he says he's going to come back tomorrow. He's going to bring the four batteries, put them all in for us, and then off we will go. <laughs> As always, fingers crossed. God knows what's going to happen, but it sounds quite promising. So we're still here, still outside the boating club. We'll have to ask loads of questions tomorrow when they all turn up trying to go out in their yachts and sort of say, well, we're stuck here, we can't help ourselves. Um, and we'll see. But yeah, fingers crossed. Tomorrow, the battery saga could be over. Bow, bow, bow. Right, no more. No more, go away. Don't know where you're coming from. Oh, look at his little face. I know, he's so cute, that one there. I know, I love you, darling. I've got no else? more. I've got no more. I'm a bit slow, but he is cute. You're not cute, you're very aggressive. Six hours later, we are now leaving the sailing club. We've been asked about 10 times, do we know you're not supposed to moor there? Um, but they've all been very understanding, really, really good actually, the people. 
rusty, really, really good, wasn't it? Brilliant, it was absolutely brilliant. So he's all the running around for us, gets everything we need. Yeah, very good. Can't recommend him enough. No, as we keep saying a lot, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> we seem case. to be very lucky, actually, yeah. with the people that we use for um, anything that we do. We seem to be very lucky with the quality of the workmanship we've been getting. Yeah. So. And basically, we've got a setup now, we've got four batteries. What are they, 115s? 115s. They're 115s. They're like cheap and cheerful. Yeah. But they're better than what we had. Exactly, and it's cost us about 700 pounds, basically, um, from start to finish. All the old batteries are gone, new ones are in there. New belts. Yeah, um, and they're set up so that we can add... Two more. We can add two more if we need to. But he's saying our battery was so bad. <laughs> that, <laughs> they probably uh, never had any life in them from the minute we picked the boat up. Yeah, so we've, we've been working on rubbish battery since February. Fingers crossed this is going to work for us. Well, yeah, well, watch this space. The thing is, it's, it isn't, they weren't necessarily the batteries we would have chosen as a permanent solution, but to fix our solution right now, yeah. it works. And we can wait, if they last two years, brilliant, in two years time, we'll do something different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and see how we go. But we haven't lost anything by doing it this Well, year. no, no. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we'll p p press pause on the lithium. Yeah. <laughs> I would look at you people, but it's so busy the river today. Loads of people in the water, um, boating on the water. I'm so far I'm going to run someone over. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. We're used to you being rude, so aren't we? We don't mind. Oh. But yeah, so we're off. We didn't want to travel in the heat of the day, but yeah, we've had no lo choice now. Old, we are travelling in the heat of the day, but yeah. no squeak anymore. That's the other thing. Yeah. Um, because our batteries were so bad, it was putting the alternator and the fan belt under extreme pressure, which is probably what caused it to squeak, even though it wasn't loose or tight. Yeah, and what caused it to snap twice as well. Yeah, so good to know. Yeah. Anyway, onward and upward. We now have batteries. You may not hear me go, oh, our batteries anymore. Oh, that would be a relief, wouldn't it? That would be a relief to everyone, me included. Me? Every night, it's yeah. everything he talks about. Batteries. It is beautiful down here, but there are, if you can see what we, oh you can, it'll be on that camera. <laughs> um, it's like, they're just scattered, there's kids in the water, there's dogs. boats in the water, there's everything, you name it, it's out there. Yeah, dogs, there'll be cows and horses in a minute as well. Right. Off we go. Onwards and onwards.